Hey guys, it's just Stephen here. I start today with a quick update. We haven't aired an episode for a while due to the ongoing lockdowns in New Zealand, but Rob and I have sorted out a remote situation, so you'll hear a lot more from us soon. In today's episode, we have not one, but two special guests, actor Craig Hall from Head High and his good mate David Snell, who helps run a charitable organisation called Everybody Eats. Now, At the time of recording this episode, which was prior to the current 2021 lockdowns, we had just wrapped on the production of Head High, and I was lucky enough to have a small supporting role on that production, and I invited Craig over to come and spend some time with us here on Reality Hub. This episode is one of my favourites, but it comes with sad news today as we put it out, and that is that TV3 have decided not to renew the show after two very successful seasons with great ratings and solid viewings on 3Now, the streaming platform. Now, to my mind, this is a tragedy, and I'll tell you why. Head High is about New Zealanders. It's about us in a sea of foreign TV shows and reality TV. This actually reflects our lives with a drama that not only revolves around our national game of rugby, but its stories are one's that you'll recognise from your own life as a Kiwi. They're set inside of our families and our kids' lives and in our communities. It's the first TV show, actually, to be set around a blended Maori family in four decades, and it's the first time we see Pacifica, European, Asian, and Maori families in our community on air all at once. <laughs> it's set in South Auckland, and in particular around two rivaling rugby-mad high schools, which in New Zealand, I think, you know, we can all relate to, so... It's a beautiful thing, and if you want to see more of it, make sure you've caught up with it on the Three Now platform before it's gone. And if you loved it, like we did making it, then let TV Three know that you'd like to see it back on air. You can write to them, email them. Someone even suggested you should send them an old rugby ball that says "Bring back head high." But well, anyway, I'll make sure you've um, got the details of how you can let TV Three know that you'd like to see more of the show in our show notes for this podcast, and encourage them to renew it for 2022. Alrighty, let's join up with Rob over in the studio with our guest actor Craig Hall and his good friend David Snell from the charity Everybody Eats. I think you'll love this episode. Well, I've got a uh, Yamaha dual purpose 1200 thing. That, that's good. a big bike. Yeah, that's a big yeah, wow, yeah. 1200. 1200. That's more than that's my power. first car. My yeah. first car was a <laughs> 998cc Toyota Starlet. <laughs> In fact, I think that makes um that make my because the first street I ever lived on was Harding Street, and my porn name therefore is uh, Starlet Harding. Starlet Harding. <laughs> Maybe it's a good Harding answer. Starlet. I'm not sure. I think uh, that's better. Harding. Did, did you really have a Toyota, Toyota Star- Starlet? More to the question: Do I really have a porn name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did have a blue right. 19. 19- 80 Toyota Starlet. Starlet. Yeah. Wow. Damn. It was my first car in 1994. Oh, it was shit. already 14 years old. Oh, Toyotas are, yeah, they're good. But yeah. It's amazing to think that now you can jump on a, a two wheeled thing that has more power than mm. yeah. some, some cars out there. It's and, cool. and, and true. As I'm, I'm a real car person, right? I love bikes, but I love road bikes. Mm. So I love that because it just gives me so much. But what's, what's, what's the appeal for motorcycles? Well, for you, for me, yeah, it's solitude. Yeah. Solid, great, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I have a real, a real problem with people that have got one someone on the back and two they're all mic'd up and you know they've got the intercom on, right? So right. they can talk to each right. other whilst they're going on the bike. Yeah, what's the point in that? That's mm. not me at all. Yeah. I I love the the. It's not peace and quiet because you get none of that, but it's just the uh, it's just you, your thoughts, and staying alive, really. And yeah. sometimes a, it's it's a, funny a because podcast it, like ours, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. That's okay. So, okay. Cycling does that for me. It's just me um, connected to my body, propelling myself, but it's the solitude. It's, 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 it's yeah. that movement yeah. and being with my own thoughts. So it's interesting that it parallels. Yeah, there's, a, there's, yeah. a, there's a freedom. It's, almost, it's, freedom. it's yeah. like that, um, you know, Zen and the other motorcycle. Ah, yes. That, yes. yes. I, I love the analogy. It gets talked about in terms of that we we're inside a house and we look you know we look out in the window we look out the window and it's a frame you're looking through a a frame or you're in a car you're looking through a windscreen you're looking through a frame you yeah. know and when you're on a motorcycle and 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 a, and, and a, a bicycle you, you're not you're still travel you're traveling and you're taking things in in a much yeah more open, you are you know mm. wide sort of way and you're actually experiencing the environment. Exactly. You know, you, you're not inside a box. You're mm. 
But yeah, for you're me, smelling it, you're smelling feeling it, it. you've got this, this, this sensation of getting the fog bugs, on your face. bugs in your teeth. Protein. Yeah, you get a yeah. protein. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, hey, it's the way of the you know, insect protein is Ooh. apparently. Are you know, well, you're going to go down that route? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for bringing up Agenda 2030. Yeah. Wow. That, that, that's, that's a James so Cameron thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't know what you feel comfortable talking about because, you know, I want you to protect your career, but far oh, out. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's heavy. Um, mm. What have you been in recently that um, we can talk about? <laughs> uh, Steve, well, well, that's you know a loaded this, question. Do you know this, Stephen? Because <laughs> we've both just been doing Head High Season yeah, 2. Yes, yeah, so that is where we most recently caught up. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and that's cool, and that was fun. It was fun and hard work. Like, the, uh, the, the last three and a half months, four months, has been uh, hugely enjoyable. Like, it's, it's the material's wonderful material, and fantastic people but it was hard work <laughs> it was hard you know what, what, what was yeah. what was the hard part just a, um i'm fairly a, a bit of i'm pretty anal and a bit of a perfectionist and mm-hmm. um and so i always i mean a lot of people always want to do the best job they can but i get quite anxious about Doing the best job I can, and when you're well, working, it shows you care, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it shows you care. And when you and when you know, if you've got a, sh- a stint on something where you go, you know what, I can turn up, and I got two or three days here where I just go smash out these scenes. I can be on top of it before I get there and and do it. it's great. When you're you know twelve, what was it thirteen, fourteen weeks of a show where you're <coughs> there every day, and sometimes you got twelve, fourteen scenes, days on the trot, wow. and you're trying to keep on top of it in terms of learning it but not only just learning it but assimilating the material and so mm. that you can actually do something with it and 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 give your best performance where you're in a scenario where it's fast turn around TV and you're you're really having to push um, yeah certainly when we wrapped I, it was a, a huge weight lifted you, you, you look like a different man at the rap party <laughs> yeah, yeah. well for one you'd had a haircut uh, yeah well that, that was yeah that was a big contributing factor but, yeah. uh, but certainly yeah yeah. So there was a bit of stress involved. Oh, fuck yeah. I mean, I'm just <laughs> reading yeah, between yeah. the lines. But, <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. but but I think people have this idea that, you know, acting, um, you're in a creative process. Um, it's, I don't want to say easy, but it, it it's it can be hard work. It can be difficult. And it can difficult. be easy. It can, and it, and it, it can, can be, be real easy. Yeah, yeah. It can be. Well, you, you want to, I mean, it, what you, you want to be go in there and, and fall off a log, you know, um, and it. Yeah. And sometimes, yeah, you get those scenarios eh, where you're like you're working with someone. It's just, it's it's sailing. The material is good, and you're both there, and you know your energies are meeting, and you're you're just sort of riding that wave. And it's sure. just, but then Flow. other times mm. it's yeah yeah it's just. But you, you, I mean, shit, you're in the trenches. You're doing you're still doing that, but you're just you go okay and next scene and next scene sure. and next scene and it's. It's fantastic. Yeah, you know, it's fantastic. You mm. get worked, um, but yeah, there was definitely a sense of relief, and also I missed my motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. How long you been riding now? Um, uh, on the road, uh, on w- riding in tow. My dad bought me a motorcycle when I was five. Wow. Um, and okay. I so I rode off road bikes <clears throat> until I was about uh, I want to say about thirteen, and then I got my first road bike when I was twenty. Mm. So, yeah, I've been riding on the road for 27, yeah, 27 years. Long time for you as well, Dave? Yeah, I was asked that same question actually by the insurance company this week. How long have you oh, been really? riding for? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was truthful. So, yeah, trying to get the premiums down, I thought, well. <laughs> sure. The longer yeah, the better, yeah, eh? Yeah yeah. 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 So, no, to answer your question, it's, it's got to be close to 30 years, I think. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Just seems like yesterday when I was learning. Hang on, was yours 27 years? 27 years. Well, three years difference. Interesting. I imagine. Yeah. So well, he's would in you, my demographic, you know. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Are you guys at a similar writing <laughs> level of skill? Would you say? No, he's a lot better than me. Really? No, uh, I wouldn't say that. We go, we, we've we've been riding different bikes. You know, no, so you ride better than me. It's simple as that. Mate. Craig, Craig's at the Tom Cruise level. <laughs> <laughs> so so, so you're also um, piloting 
helicopter. Uh, no, uh, you can do you do, do your own stunts. I right? do. Yeah. <laughs> do oh, God, I don't want to offend any any stunt stunt performers by saying that. Um, How about you do all the stunts that they don't do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. With yeah. The, the stuff where like, you stand like, still uh, and open yeah. my mouth. Yeah, that, well, maybe your those. lines. <laughs> do all those. I do yep. all the stunt lines. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I, yeah, like, I guess started off 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 road, but then was never really. wasn't like I was doing motocross or anything. It was just you know riding in f- friends' farms and forests and whatnot, and then road bikes. Uh, actually, I was riding a lot with even Carl Bennett. Um, uh, yeah, Carl, sure. So he's like, he's car mad, isn't he? Yeah, car and 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 bike mad. So yes, yeah. um, so we used to ride fairly fast bikes together like sort of road bikes and and uh and then i went down that road of fast japanese you know sports Mm. bikes Mm. um and then yeah and then uh a friend said to me um you should probably stop riding those big bikes because one day you know (laughs) Right. Uh, and and I, it was funny. Mm. I, like, I'd heard a lot of people say it to me previously, but when he said it, it's just sort of. It hit home. It hit, yeah. And I, and so I, yeah, I, and also at that stage, I was with my wife and she liked to ride with me, but those bikes aren't very conducive to a comfortable <clears throat> pillion experience. So, um, okay. So she wasn't piloting. So, yeah, no, she, oh, she, she would sit on the back, but the, but the, the seats are token, you know, token. Mm. And she's, Stopping it when I'm braking, she's you know, putting her hands on the tank to stop herself from oh. smacking me in the head with her helmet. And yeah, so I got a so I got a Bonneville, I got a Triumph Bonneville, and um, so much more cruisy style. And that's the bike I bought that new in 2008 and basically traded it in end of last year for the bike I've got now. Wow, so yeah, changed sort of styles. And and I've actually gone a little bit back to roots. I've got a Triumph Scrambler, a 1200 Scrambler, and it's so it's has off road capabilities and mm-hmm. whatnot. So yeah, it's just a bit more, bit more fun for that sort of stuff, you know. Less speed. Well, obviously our conversations can go anywhere you like, but um, if I could frame it up a bit, there are a few things I'm interested in knowing. Um, and it's really nice having uh, a couple of successful people in the studio. I'm really keen to get your your take and perspective on what has brought you so much success, so much regular work, and how you think you've gotten to that, because a lot of people will want that, yeah. but aren't necessarily experiencing that. Yeah, it, it's, it's, a str- it's a strange one, because I... I oh, <sighs> like, I, I had a determination early on. I, I had some really, some people that, that gave me encouragement really early on. Um... Carl Winnett being one of them, um, Karen Hutchison, um, and I was not acting when I met those people, and they were on Shorten Street. They were on our national TV show, and and uh, and I had talked about having interest uh, in acting, and uh, and they they really encouraged me to go for it. But I I think I've, I'm fairly bloody minded. <laughs> I'm pretty. Um, I think I think I did have some natural talent for it, and I don't know how. I don't know what that is. I don't. I don't think it's something that I um, perhaps knew until I started doing it. But I knew I enjoyed something about it that where I could kind of lose myself and and as you say, try and reach the truth in some sort of. You, you know, you're kind of bullshitting, <laughs> <laughs> but to reach the truth within that bullshit, you know, and convincing yourself, mm. and therefore convincing someone else and um is it, is it something you can distill down into and quantify because you say you have uh, a desire for it you have a um a calling for it yeah yeah i'm just well because yeah, no, at yeah. that time you wanted to do it and you they encourage you yeah yeah what um so it spoke what age you were you at, at that point as well just uh i was 19 Great. I don't mean to hijack yeah. Rob. No, 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 no but Rob's that's, that's good for though. reference, though. Yeah. That's, that's a young age because at that yeah. age you kind of figure out what the hell what I want to do in my life. Well, I didn't, I didn't this know. seems like a good option, maybe. Yeah, yeah and I was yeah. I was working yeah, in the foundry at, at mm. the time. You know, I was yeah. like, I, I had said to my parents, uh, uh, if I can I have a year off because I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to study. Mm. Yeah. And they said, well, you can have a year off if you get an A-bursary. <laughs> and so I was like, I remember the A bursary. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, and I was like, okay, shit, all right, let's go. And um, yeah. you know, and so I did that and earned, got my year off, and then just did a bunch of different 
things. I was, you know, um, worked in a foundry and worked in a mailing center and um, and just you know different different bits and pieces. And what, then met, what was their expectations on you? Do you think? Um, as, they, as context to they, their hopes and dreams for you. Well, they they were. I mean. My dad had a, his, his own business um, at that stage. He was you know, packaging and, and hot melt systems, and um, and so I'd go and do some oh, work wow. with him. And and I think there was, uh, you know, he was always open if I wanted to do that with with him. But I know that his dad was very hard on him in terms of what he, he was expected to do, mm. um, and didn't didn't actually he wanted to. The things that he wanted to mm. do, his dad just basically said, no, <laughs> you know, right. you're getting, I've got you an apprenticeship as an engineer, you know. Yeah. And, so uh, did he rebel against that for you? Yeah, mm. which is yeah. pretty awesome of him because yeah. you can repeat that yeah. pattern. I was just going to say, just, that's quite common. I think yeah. that'll speak to a lot of people. And then as a, as a father, you want to change that sort yeah. of generational Yeah, so he was thing. very open to, yeah, to like, w- mm. what do you want to pursue? And, uh, and, yeah, and then I, at the time I had a girlfriend who was the complete opposite. She was mm-hmm. like, "When you're going to get a real fucking job?" Um, and really? she was, wow. yeah. you know, she was at university mm. studying finance, and I was getting like, "Getting well, a real job, getting a real job." And I was like, "Well, is that what you want to do?" And she's like, "No, but I know it'll earn me money." And I was like, well, "I just don't want to do that." Like, yeah, I just don't think that's. And so yeah, so I met those those lads and and uh, and really sort of, you know, um, pursued it. But I had a lot of help. That early, like it's at for, you know, I was pretty uh, fortunate early on and had some help by some really awesome people in the industry. I mean, like some like Di Ro- no, Di Rowan, you remember, mm. yeah, just yeah. for Dino Ron and hmm. wonderful as, as actress a, and as a, director, me, as a mentor. Kind yeah, of thing? Well, yeah, she cast me in um, Hercules. Um, oh, I had yeah, a yes. couple of bits oh, and pieces yeah. for <laughs> well, cast in Hercules, like '94 or something. And and is she uh, still casting? No, she's not. No. Um, mm. Actually, I hadn't seen her in a long, long while. I don't know. I don't know what she's doing, but she yeah. was wonderful. Like, because you know, if you come in with something, she would really work with you to mm. Tr- mm. try and get the best out of your choice. Mm. You know, and um, when she cast me in, in Hercules, she brought me back. She took me out to set on a day I wasn't shooting, just to get used to what was happening. Because she knew As I'd never a young been actor. on a. Yeah, yeah, I'd never been on a big set before. Sort of like orientation <laughs> right. day. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. And and then she took me back to. Um, to her casting place, and she ran me through what um, you know, what hitting a mark was, number ones, you know, all different terminology that was going to be, mm. Mm. you know, said to me that I that, and you she had no just, idea what it would be. Yeah, and so she just gave me a bunch of technical things before I yeah. she had to go on. So I could. So Hercules comes in at about what age for you? Uh, well, that would have been ninety four, so eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Mm, right. Yeah. I was going to say. Um, so your training was on the job, basically. Was, yeah. It was yeah. You didn't come in as a as a as someone who'd gone through a drama school or no. Or no. First, you know, I did. I did, I did some workshop. Yeah. Like I sure. when I was trying to get yeah. an agent, the mm. agent said to me, "Okay, we'll go go and do these this workshop." Yeah. This, uh, Kenneth McGregor down yeah. at the Jeffrey James Theatre, which mm. is now in basement, was a silo. Um, and it was a, he was an American actor who was teaching sort of a method style. Yeah. Mm. And uh, I went to that, and he basically relayed back to the, the agent, and she said, and then she took me on. So I was doing those. So that's quite powerful, isn't it? When when teachers have that sort of um, yeah that connection, mm-hmm. and that was her, because without the agent in this industry for the longest time, you're nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just got no access, and and I think that was her way of kind of vetting, you know, <laughs> potential. Fair enough. You know, and and Kieran Hutchison gave me. He, he said that Kenneth said to me on the phone, um, come. You know, on this night, and have a monologue prepared. I was like, "Great!" I rang Karen <coughs> Hutchison and went, um, "What's a monologue?" <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "It's just a, a scene where it's just you talking." I was like, "Oh fuck, okay." And he, uh, it's he a lot said, to learn. It's a lot to learn. And he <laughs> yeah. said, "What well, do you want me to send you one here? I've got something that might be good for you." And he sent me um, the uh, Emilio Estevez uh, uh, monologue from um, a Breakfast Club, right? And uh, and so, yeah, that was the first monologue ever did. And g- just give me another s- a time sense on this. About what year again was that? Uh, that would have been still ninety four. Yeah, it would have been ninety four. By email. 
play fix. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but that's kind of what I'm getting at, right? Because that's where we were. And yeah. we had fax machines oh, and yeah. we had pages, right? And yeah. I had one and I had totally, yeah. the coolest Panasonic answer phone recording machine too. And like I was so stoked with all the good stuff. All the good stuff. And yeah. and uh, I, I see them in movies now and go, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. But isn't it, I mean, when you think about it, like a, you know, a fax, yeah, I was like, I'll send it over now, boom, and it comes out the fucking thing printed. It's not like now I'm yeah, gonna get an email, and now I'm going to hook it up to my, pr- you know, yeah. Now I've got like- to fart around connecting. <laughs> oh, I've got to log in. <laughs> yeah. go, oh shit, I've got to do a software update. Yeah, <laughs> the facts so, just work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they were yeah. very hard to respond to as well, weren't they? It's not like an email today that just sort of creates its own sort of life force and just keeps yeah. going and yeah. goes back mm-hmm. and forth. It's just, yeah. You've got to be pretty motivated to return a fax. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, that's true. That's I, true. I wonder if there's anyone still using a fax out there. I oh, think shit. lawyers and real estate agents are still. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I yeah. guess that's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it makes maybe. sense. Yeah. 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 So, okay. so that was yeah. the beginnings of your acting journey in, in a sense. And yeah. so... I don't even know if I answer, really answered what, the, yeah. what you're, what you're well, getting at. Well, where, where we ultimately are getting at is um, what gets you in the flow to continue getting more work. It's okay if you yeah. don't come to that at um, all for a while, but I just I am keen to come away. Um, one of the benefits of being a co-host of a podcast is I get someone cool in and I can do something for my own benefit. <laughs> I get to ask them shit I like, wouldn't otherwise have the balls to ask them. You know, like a lot of actors wouldn't really have the guts to go up to another actor and go, how can you get so much work? Right. But I want to know, man. I I want to know if you're willing to share what could be helpful to other people. Well, um, something that that, that Sass reminds me of a lot, she said, you work really fucking hard. Like, give yourself a break, you know? Um, Well, she gets a lot of work done. She does. She Mm. does. And And, and that could be in part um, a symbiotic thing. No, a a resonance thing where two people who are willing to work hard help each other. Absolutely. And and constantly, I, I think it's also not ever feeling good enough <laughs> you know sure and so uh, I don't a lot I, of people view that as a negative right yeah but, but it, it serves you it serves well, you can, me and you it, can d- reframe and it that doesn't as well. serve me as well mm. yeah. Right. yeah you can reframe that terminology and say well um, you know I always want to improve I always want to get better I'm not always satisfied yeah yeah, yeah. so then that, yeah, I think that's striving to succeed stri- yeah. striving to evolve yourself your craft and yeah and yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. and uh, have a hu- I have a huge amount of respect for that. Th- there's still stuff I see. I go, oh, I could never do that. You know what that mm-hmm. person just did on. Sure. Sc- I could never do that. And so I, yeah. There's always that. I never f- have felt that I've that I'm there. <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Sure. And so yeah. I do work really hard. And also uh, early on, I, I went to America very. You know, in like 2004. LA and, and to LA and yeah. um and you know and. I've got an agent and, and whatnot, but I saw how hard people worked. They work harder, right? Yeah. They work hard, and you know it's com- it's competition. It's like this, mm, just yeah. you know, you're rolling up, and 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 also, uh, Karen always said to me, "It's like LA just felt like the end of the road. It's like you're not anywhere going. Where else could I be mm, in sure. my industry? This is it." And and I just and I think I, when I come back to New Zealand, I just. I think I was was always working hard, but I just had a renewed you know, sense. Yeah, you, of it. And also, you, I, hmm. the, I, like, there's so many things I'm interested in, like movement. Like I just, you know, like you would have studied um, well, barn and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, three you know. years at drama school, mm, you yeah. know, you go that stuff still just stokes me. Like you know, mm. when you find like a where a character sits, where the centre is, or how they move, or what what part of their body they're driven from or you know psychology all that stuff there's so much because you're trying to represent a human being which is made up of so many different facets like mm. it's a never ending yeah these are the Michelle Hine explore. classes I'll never forget <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean yeah, yeah. wonderful yeah like yeah. you know mm. it changes you just, just you know, going back check to off stuff and sorry just going back to your LA um, experience you, you got you got a sense or a measure of where you lined up against other people yeah the, the playing field is so different over there so it forces yeah. you to up your game yeah. right and I Absolutely. think in New Zealand if you're surrounding yourself with people that are at a certain level then you go to somewhere where they're supposed to be the, the best of the best you you, yeah. you kind of get a sense of oh, okay yeah, you how, do, a, how do I measure up Absolutely. I've got to improve my game and then but then you've got to also question do you have the 
the d- desire and drive because it's got to be yeah. self motivated as well. It, it, it does, but then you get and so how I kind of um, got together with my, with my wife was uh, uh, there was a. Uh, revolutionary it's called revolutionary acting program rap and it was it was like 98 rings a bell yeah Mm. um and it was uh god the name just went dean uh, he was at nida he was head of acting at nida and Mm -hmm. he'd sort of started another um school of training and he was doing these courses um coming over to do like three or four day intensive you know, courses and if memory serves, they were quite expensive, and they were pretty expensive. But they were, they were pretty um, incredible. Like there's some mm. really amazing breakthroughs I saw in so many people. Um, but out of that, we created a a scene group. Yeah, you know, and we did that on and off for 10, 12 years. You know, it was Will Wallace wow. in that? and Will Will came in. Um, yeah, and I think he still has one that he operates now. And hmm. um, at at that stage, it was uh, it was Sass and I and Stephen Lovett and Teresa Healy and uh, Sarah Smuts Kennedy. Um, it was Renee O'Connor was there for was, you know Gabriel and Zena. She was in New Zealand for years, and hmm. you know, she would come along and play. And and then over the years, different people came came in and dropped out and. But we would, we would endeavour to do it every week, and you would learn a scene, and you would work it, and you would be tested by your pet. You know, you would stand yeah. there, and they would go, "You get to know someone really well," and go, "You're now you're you're falling back on that thing that you did, that mm. you do, mm. or you're hiding yourself. You're not committing to it. Okay, now mm. let's completely change the dynamic. Like, you know, let's mm. let's play the complete opposite to what you just did, or change the relationship, or mm. and and so you would. It was Jim. It was just gym, a, gym for actors. Gym. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and um, and I know that I've done, still done some of my best work in that. You know sure. what I mean? Like, yeah, and you go, and no, no one's ever filmed it. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah. damn. It's like a handful of people who have, yeah. and I've seen other people do. I've seen Will do some insane stuff. Mm. Like you just go, sass, and uh, uh, yeah, so many people like um, Susan Brady, uh, God, Peter Feeney, um, Peter Elliott, like like, and you're playing with you know really good players hmm. and so i guess that it's yeah that i know that that helped me hmm. a shit ton you know in those periods where you're between work and you and yeah. you're not just the, the next time you act is when you got an audition and go oh, fuck. yeah you're not just sitting idle no and it's like we talk yeah. about this steve mm. um it's being match fit Mm. Keeping yourself match fit, even and so that when the casting opportunity comes around, you're you're match fit. You're up yeah. to speed. Yeah. But if you haven't been practicing, if you haven't been, it's, yeah, you you're get, going. Oh man, you get clunky. Uh, you get. Yep. Yeah. You're rusty. You're yeah. You're absolutely. You're, you're not in that. So. Yeah. And that you, it even happens. It even happens in our podcast. Yes. If we go too long of a gap, um, yeah. there are some things that I do where I go. <laughs> and yeah, you yeah. make noises. Doing it's it. like a, I'm. Mm, mm, well, uh, if we go for a stretch of podcasts, that's just gone. Yeah. It's gone. You know, I don't do things like that. Yeah. Uh, because just become so relaxed around the microphone. Yeah. Don't think too hard. Just talk. Well, the, the, and the relaxation is, mm. that's another thing that come into my life, you know, um, uh, through other other disciplines. But um, <laughs> re- relaxation. Should we say yoga? Yoga, well, yoga, actually, more sort of um, Chinese martial arts. And, and so he's, <laughs> if you can see Dave's so face he's, right he's now, he's silently like, cracking up. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah sure, yoga. Yeah, yeah yoga. yoga. Yeah, yeah, yoga. Let's just say yoga. Med- meditation. Meditation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and and actually realizing the the the, the time and the space that you buy yourself, mm. uh, you know, on screen yeah. by being relaxed. It, it's you but know. it's but you bring up a really good point. In any discipline or any any facet of life, the more relaxed you are, the more you can be present. The more you rely on the things that you've practiced. Yeah, you're, you're, it's like an athlete on a on the playing field. You know, you Absolutely. resort to the instincts and all that. Yeah, yeah. But I wanted to backtrack because you mentioned your wife, and I was Who thinking that was going to lead up Sarah, to something. Sarah Wiseman, and, right? And everyone calls so her that, sass. So that's yeah. where you met in the scene group. Yeah, we yeah, we right. had um, yeah we we had well I'd met her at a. Uh, agent Christmas party, but I don't think she remembers me. 
oh, that particular meeting. Um, <laughs> so we have differing opinions on sure, when, when we you actually first, met. Yeah, sure. but, uh, but yeah, and then street legal, she which she had got straight out of drama school, straight out of right. amazing Young school, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think she even was there for her um, graduation. Like she had just gone oh, that right? straight, you know, straight in. Well, she was a year ahead of me at the same school. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't yeah. recall elements of her graduation because I was in my third year yeah. at the time. Or I can't, I can't recall if she even did the, th- the the degree or she stopped at the diploma. But she was a year she ahead of me. She did the degree, I think. That's right. And she was yeah. one of the few people who returned for it. Yeah. Yeah. She was incredibly yeah. caring and supportive. Yeah. yeah. Whilst at the same time, she gave off an air of, should I know my stuff? Yeah. Yeah. And she's a challenger, like she's, uh, you know, like what she with her stu- with the students now in the actors program, like she, you know, mm. she definitely she pushes them, mm. pushes them, and and it's wonderful. But she pushes herself too, and she doesn't get them to do anything that she wouldn't do. And, right, you know, it's it's pretty <clears throat> inspiring, and it, that's another thing feeding into what we were talking about before is that being with someone who you I, I, I hold her in very high regard in terms of what we do you know mm. um, a lot of people do myself included yeah I hardly see her but um, you know like other than in passing if I would by chance or maybe she's at Will's place when I pop around to visit Will you know yeah because we have friends in common yeah, yeah. Um, well Will, have, Will and her went out for yeah. four years indeed yeah. indeed yeah it's, it's yeah. The, there's a lot of connection there between everyone um I have a photo of Sass, which I found um, in my mother's collection of things. And she oh, passed away two years ago. Yeah, yeah. I remember you saying. And there's a photo of, of Sass checking my tie. I remember you saying And this. my hat yeah, yeah, yeah. and my graduation. Oh, wow. And I'll, I treasure it because yeah, mum cool. treasured it. And it's like, oh, there's Sass in 1999. That's cool. Oh, and me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and my son. Uh, yeah. but, but Sass is there with it. Yeah. 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 Um, Oh, that's awesome. That's, that's wonderful. Yeah, it's, it's, it's special. And I don't think she would have any idea. But uh, as a memory, it's just um, she's just so nice and willing to just come up to each person and check how they're doing. And, how you doing, mate? Oh, yeah. congratulations. And, oh, let me adjust that for you onto yeah. the next person, you know? Yeah. And it's just, it says a lot. Yeah, she's still, she's yeah. still like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's yeah. still, yeah, I mean, Dave's, but, you know, we... we you probably, when you come around to our place, we have you know, parties at our place or whatnot, and she's always at everyone's service. You know, she's yeah. always making sure everyone's. She's hosting like she's with ho- pride, she's absolutely right yeah. to the right to the you know right to the bitter end. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to the bitter end. And sometimes the end is very bitter. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, she's she's wonderful. Yeah, um, but that definitely we. We feed each other and what we do, you mm. know. And, and I suppose challenge. you know because acting can be, it can be yeah. hell for some people. It can be difficult, you know. It can yeah. be a real difficult journey. It can be a lonely yeah. a lifestyle. We mentioned this yeah. with yeah. other actors in terms of yeah. you go from job to job, you build a little connection and family, and then you might have to move overseas, you know, and yeah. up until you. The, it's hard to get uh, have roots and have that consistency, but yeah. having people in your life that you can. You know, it's support network is, is important, and, yeah. and it's yeah. and it's super important to like you know, uh, as I was saying to you earlier, like Rob, that yeah. um, if it wasn't for the people, like the, the uh, I guess that it's the whānau that that you collect along the way, yeah. that you know, that have been through in the trenches with you, yes. you know, and understand mm. and understand that. But then equally, um, to have people who aren't in that world and. And you know, like Dave and I, we have we have great chats that are, are, that are applicable to any sort of field yes. that mm. you're that you're mm. in, you know. Um, and and also to have that perspective that that sits outside of it as well, mm. you know, I think is super important. And so on, you know. Sounds like you and have a beer with them. Mm. Ride, your, ride, your, ride your motorcycle with them. Eh? Sounds like you and Dave um, should start your own podcast. <laughs> That's actually how Rob and I yeah. started our podcast. We would have a lot of great chats, mm. and then at the end of it, I'd go, oh, we should have recorded that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's right. We've got something to say. Yeah. Yeah. People need to hear it. At least that's what I thought. That's <laughs> no, great, but it's. Yeah. But when you walk away, you, as you know, you walk away from a conversation, you feel uplifted and yes. enlightened and, mm. and yeah. um Expanded yeah. and um, expansion's the thing, right? Like it so is. You know, you don't. Mm-hmm. You life's too short to hang out with people that that you come away feeling contracted. 
yeah. <laughs> from being with, you know. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and you learn something from because everyone has a story, you mm. know, every, everyone. And as you were saying with your, your chats, you know, yeah. It can be applic- applicable to anything in, in the human context of life. Absolutely. And, and it can cross over. And, and um, this guy, just a quick, like, just a, yeah. not quick, but like a, you know, um, bridge across. <laughs> to, <laughs> bridge, I'm pointing at him. On. No one can see it because, you know, it's, it's a podcast. Um, but, you know, like where you are, it feels like from what I see, Dave, like where you are in your life is that, you uh, in an area when you're wanting to give back, you know, mm. back to the community, and 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 and, um, and I admire that okay. hugely, you know. Mm. Um, and you're av- super active in it. Yeah, it's well, it's <laughs> to the point where I did retire. Is I had mm. plenty of time on my hands and time to think about what I wanted to do. Well, I was keen to ask you about some of those things that you mentioned earlier, um, because obviously, well. Oh, there's more of that journey I'm going to pick apart, if you don't mind, yeah, Greg. Yeah, absolutely. On the topic of finding your groove and finding success and stuff, I reckon I just have a feeling, uh, Dave, you might have another perspective on it from where you've come through in the world and what you did and what, what keeps working for you, how you generate things that keep working for you, even if it's in a corporate setting. You know? Sure, okay. To some degree, my, my life, without getting sort of too philosophical, was driven by circumstance. Um, and, a, and a need to earn money, I'll mm-hmm. be honest with you, mm-hmm. from quite an early age. Um, unfortunately, my family, when I was back in the UK, sort of split up and broke up, and it was just my mum and myself left. And that's, I do remember going hard. through um, the Bristol Evening Post, which is a mm. Bristol paper, and trying to pick out the job that I thought was going to pay most money mm-hmm. and go for it. Mm. Well, I lied my way into that job. Wow. Mm. Um, so I guess sort of reflectively is that there was a lesson there, which was recognize opportunity and be brave. Wow. And yeah. not necessarily lie all the time, but <laughs> I lied about my age, by the way, for this job. Um, and I think that's really what's those three things. You said you're was, older? When well, you I, said yeah, you're, I did. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, um, there was all sorts of strange um, laws about young people doing shift work and stuff. And, and, this, right. and this job required me to be of a certain age, if I can recall it properly. So, um, yeah, I went to the interview and convinced the guys that I was the man for the job and then had to come clean about my age. (laughs) Uh, Because eventually they're going to need your your IRS, IRS, IRD info. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, that really was the lesson, and I'm just listening to you guys talk, Mm. is that I've I've sort of revisited some of this for the first time in a long time, and it's... Success for me was um, providing. It was... Um, making sure that I could provide uh, for you know for my family um, as best I could, and that was a driver. I'll be honest with you. So, did I have you know did I have a, a real sort of corporate view of myself and where I wanted to go? No. In fact, um, I do subscribe to the theory that you know there's no such thing as a, a career path. It's crazy mm. paving and someone else lays it. <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah, That's crazy I like that. paving and someone else lays yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> what was the first crazy paving? What was the first crazy paving in terms yeah, of work? What was the job, yeah. Oh, it's, it was technology, it was IT, it was... Okay. Yeah, there were yeah. computers, you know, what you've got on your phone now was, um, in terms of capability, it was a full room of computers and mm. they needed yeah. bodies to look after them, so... Yeah, yeah. right. So, so your background was IT or did it change? It, 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 was, it was technology linked, but it became as much about large corporate um, companies trying to get the best out of IT as opposed to it oh. being a bits and bytes... Mm-hmm. Type view of the world. Mine became a very much a um, an organisational. Oh, like like um, would it be fair to say we do X Y Z thing, and how can technology serve us entirely from beginning to end? Yeah, a little bit. I was I was lucky. I worked for two of the big four consultancies around the world, so KPMG and Deloitte were two of my <laughs> employers. My brothers work for both of them. Is currently uh, a partner in one of them. There you go. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we would get very large sort of global projects. I was very lucky. I traveled the world and, and got to drink in some very expensive places on expenses. That was fabulous. Wow. Um, yeah. But no, we would, yeah, we would get big challenges. Good examples would be if two banks got smashed together, mm. you know, through an acquisition or a divestment. What does technology look like, at, you know, at the outcome of mm. that type of a deal? And I used to go in with a bunch of very talented people and try and make sense out of 
something that was quite hairy and quite scary. Well, so- the, the, the financial industry technology thing is a, a really interesting topic if you were to diverge as far as where cryptocurrency is going now. Sure. And, mm. and the, the digital pathway that's led up to this point as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's... Uh, it's interesting where technology is going without, you know, once again, getting too philosophical. Um, the power of uh, an algorithm is unbelievable these days, what what can be achieved. Um, it was interesting, you know, the, the, the compute power is all there, the thing that will hold it back at the people. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, yeah, I often feel that my bank could have offered a few of those services that are in the app many years sooner, but they didn't. Yeah, <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So just coming back, like you, you were a problem solver. Was that kind of the the benefit of your yeah, service? We, absolutely. We yeah. Were, am At I, that point, my problem solver. I think I worked with a lot of people that were a lot more talented than me mm. that were very good problem solvers. Sure. I, I just happened to have yeah. a a particular talent. I think for making simple things out of stuff that was complex. Right. Well, only for my own benefit, by the way, so I could understand. Uh, it. That was going to be my next <laughs> question because was that. Once again, the driver was the financial, the lucrative side of it. For me? Yeah, for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah driven, driven by that. Absolutely. Yeah. The more I earned, the easier my life became and the more options I had. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I wasn't a, you know, I wasn't a mega million dollar no, but, earner, but towards mm, the yeah, end, okay, I, but I mean, let's, comfortable. But let's be blunt. You say you've gotten quite comfortable. You've retired at age 60 in a beautiful part of New Zealand, and Craig has just said that you give a lot back. Mm. So that's really worked out, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, towards the end, it was. I, I realised that the harder I worked, the more wealthy other people got. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, yes. And that 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 became a bit of a personal issue for me. Yeah. Uh, mm. And the whole, I, I guess, the way that the world is going now. I'd rather be more sociable than corporate now. And yeah. if I can, if I can generate some benefit by being. Um, sociable in the community uh, rather than being very good with a you know with a with a project or a challenge that's corporate is that um, I'm very happy with that as an outcome someone once said um, the key to success is to be likable that's why I'm not that successful <laughs> I thought it was going to be <laughs> I thought it was going to be the opposite day surely surely there are more keys to success that just well no but i think it's a it's an important one yeah um because yeah, i know i know what you're saying they yeah. just people buy use your service you- again if you're a dick about yeah. it you well, know yeah that, yeah was it you know we were talking about the other day sass is used and says you know you get you get further with with honey than you do with vinegar yeah yeah it's sure oh, it's, yeah. yeah absolutely mm. but you i like what you know you're talking about brave and actually what was your three Three things about it's like cur- not curiosity, but curiosity is definitely one of the things as an attribute I think everybody should have. Mm. Um, if you're not curious, are you really engaged with the world? And mm. to be honest, you're mm. going to be pretty fucking boring if you're not curious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 I agree. Yeah. Yeah, but unfortunately, I, I don't know about you guys, but I do. I, I encounter an awful lot of people that aren't curious, and and certainly once again towards the latter end of working is that I would go into situations where you would think that you know board members would at the very least be curious mm. sure and they wouldn't it would be yeah. it would you, be. you mean like in your instance curious about the technology that the company was engaging Curi- yeah in? absolutely i'm curious about what's happening you know in other um in other companies around the world and that's huh. that's the sort of stuff that that we You'd could think run. that was really important you, you would think you so. just yeah yeah. Mm. yeah um so if you give a shit about what the competition's doing and i think you should yeah, mm. yeah. and it, interestingly and i don't want to get offside with anybody here in New Zealand. New Zealand, at a at a company level, is the least curious country I've ever come across. Hey man, we got a lot of problems, and that's not just <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's just one of them. <laughs> oh, yeah, you bring that up. Do you do you, do you think that is because of our geographical location that we're insulated in a bubble that it becomes a collective sort of way of looking at things, or <laughs> is it a corporate version of tall poppy syndrome? Yeah, no, I'm just trying to yeah, you you. You raise that, and I'm just curious as to what your take on that it's, um, is. I, it's the beam of the batch in the boat. That, um, that Sorry? The, the beamer? The beam of the batch in the boat. Ah, batch yes. In the, boat. So yeah. the beamer, yeah, yeah, yeah. At corporate level, I, I, I'd heard this phrase, mm, beamer, batch in the boat. Wow. And it was, for me, that translates as if you go and, you know, see leaders of industry, yeah. and they're all, they've done quite well, and it's very, you know, they're very comfortable, and they don't really need to be, 
um, particularly aggressive and motivated in, in their leadership roles is a lot of people I've met aren't yet. They're, you know, they have a responsibility mm. to their employees to be those types of people, to, to, to really seek better. Yeah. And, yeah. And when my experience, this isn't everybody, this is very talented people. So mm. With the beam of the batch in the boat yep. scenario, once you've got the beam of the batch in the boat, <laughs> is it kind of like, I don't, so, have to, I don't have to keep going any further? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I think that directly translates in into motivation and or indeed the you know the word was curiosity i don't think mm. people necessarily are as curious as they should be if they hold those positions mm. um and that um yeah life's pretty comfortable should we call this episode the beam of the batch and the bike <laughs> and the bike <laughs> and the bike and the, what that could be a beam it's, yeah, it's yeah like i mean it's true i think it's def- it's how you define success i was never aspirational to have the beam of the batch you know that was not drive i had other things that i wanted to be successful in so but i'm not judging that i mean that's fine if that's how you define success but it's interesting how we can get complacent and we stop asking questions Mm. and we stop wanting to evolve or get better what what's that threshold and is that something we fall into is that an an innate part of ourselves or is, is you know is that depending on the like obviously that's something that you have innately that you picked up on whether that was from your childhood or whether that's just something that came to you but we we say here at reality hub it's it's all within you know it's all mm. within you that the, you you've you can lead the horse to water but you can't make a drink sort of thing you know it's mm. with everything in life but it fascinates me when you know because i think we all have innate talents but sometimes we're scared to mm. to show that because we're also scared of success maybe um an application of those talents yeah, in yeah. different in different forms. Yeah, you know, and like, finding what your groove is and what yeah. you're good at. Yeah, yeah, and like the, 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 you, and generally what you're doing is just a, a spoke on the on the hub. Sure, on the wheel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. link it back to it. But um, <laughs> it goes round. It goes. It goes round. Oh my yes. god, it's never ending. Yeah, and it isn't because it's a circle. Anyway, hey, <laughs> um, but like you know, the thing about Dave, what you, you know, what you're doing. Now with with you know like with everybody Good eats, news. you know you you're applying stuff you learn in a vastly different industry. To, mm. yeah. You know. yeah. So oh, I want to hear about this. Mm. you're you're a good secret keeper. Everybody eats. Mm-hmm. Tell us about it. Uh, it's a I describe it as a food movement um, that really has been set up and it's been in operation for about four years now. By um, it's been set up by a very talented man. And if he hears this, I hope he gets embarrassed. Um, a guy called Nick Loosely. And Nick, um, Nick was driven to do better in the world for more people. So he, he has established, um, four restaurants across New Zealand, one in Onihanga, one in K Road, mm-hmm. one in Papama, and one in Wellington, uh, with the sole purpose of, um, bellies, not bins. So, right. Um, the operational mm. side of everybody eats is uh, it's geared towards trying to solve three problems: uh, food waste. About a third of all food that gets produced around the world ends up in landfill. It right, becomes a big methane problem. Um, food poverty, very much in the news. You know, you can't can't not go a week without hearing about food poverty. Food is very expensive and mm. off limits to this a, country. To a lot of people, sure absolutely. Is, yeah. And then there's the problem of social isolation. You know, a lot of people don't get the opportunity to eat in a restaurant in a dignified manner because um, they can't afford to mm. or, or they're not comfortable to do that. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah the uh, the restaurants are um, Koha, so it's pay-as-you-feel restaurants. Okay. And uh, it operates by intercepting food that would have otherwise ended up in the landfill that goes from supermarkets. So... You know, good examples would be ugly fruit that isn't quite yes. round enough to make it on the shelf. Is that will get intercepted and, and end up to being turned into um, a three course meal at any one of our restaurants. Wow! And it's um, it's a fabulous thing to be involved in. It's extremely humbling, but very rewarding. I work uh, I work front of house, and I'm probably I reckon I'm probably the worst waiter probably that the world has ever seen. <laughs> so, hang on, where is the closest location to you? Um, I've got a little place in Onihunga as well. Uh, oh, okay. Um, so as well as living down in Pono is uh, I'm in Onihunga and the restaurant there that's open five nights a week. I'm going to have to head, head yeah. down there please come on, I'd go and, Please come on down. It would be fabulous. I mean, yeah. uh, you've said that you do your podcasts from um, – Yes, Sometimes from the restaurant in Avondale. Um, yeah, from Brown Street Cafe. Well, if you've got a new uh, uh, 
a place I can eat and talk, I'm in. Mate, you'd be more than welcome. We'd love to see you there. It's a fabulous um, venue. It's a, it's a nice restaurant too. Yeah, and, and, and the vibe is, um, it's just sensational. To be, being able to feed people yeah. in a mm. dignified way. And the, 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 the food that I gets don't really put eat out in a fabulous. dignified way, to be, to be fair. <laughs> so. Let so it get served in a dignified way. How you, sure. how you eat it, yeah, yeah. So. It's up to you. Up to you. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the one in K Road? It's a pop-up one. So it's uh, operation uh, every Monday at um, Jamezi Street, which is the Lebanese restaurant in St. Kevin's Arcade. Right. right. So, okay. Yep. So every yep. Monday, yep. Um, the guys put three courses on uh, and do a fabulous, fabulous job. I think the most people we fed in one night at that location's over 400 people wow whoa that's a good night yeah that's Any a lot restaurants of covers mm. Mm. yeah um yeah. we've uh we've i think we're getting close to having served sixty thousand meals now since 2017 wow um, awesome. i forget the tonnage of food that saved it's mm. ridiculous Wow. Ugly fruit, eh? Um, you know, we have this idea of what a perfect fruit looks like, and it goes into our consciousness of an apple looks like this or a pear looks like this. Well, if there's anything happening with evolution and it's changing, <laughs> there's going to be more ugly fruit, mm. you know, it, because the idea of what's not marketable or not sellable I to know. another country, it's it's almost a little bit sick. It's mm. a bit bizarre. Mm. Yeah, I think there's some changes coming here in, in Europe. Um, it's certainly mandated in places like France where that, you know, that stuff is not allowed to go to the landfill. It has to actually be on sale at a, at a, at a reasonable rate. Uh, the clever French. Uh, I hate the fact. food. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. I hate the fact that a New Zealand export item could be on sale in another country for half or a third of what we pay for oh it. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. It shits me. Mm. I'm going to Costco, like, you know, the mess of wholesale, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, and you see New Zealand cuts that you, back home you'd be paying three times. Cuts of lean beef or just, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And you go, oh, that's, that's, where, it, that's where all the good stuff <laughs> yeah. goes and yeah. gets sold at a decent, you know. But this is, but that happens in timber here, as, you know, all sorts uh, of industries. Like, yeah. you know, we're not, we're sending timber away to get, you know, treated and whatnot to come back. Oh, that's nuts, eh? And to be finished. To be finished. Or, to, to be yeah. to converted into a usable building yeah. material. We send the raw materials off offshore. Is and that what we, you're saying? Uh, yeah, in, in that regard. And also, I guess, in the in the way of the the, the quality of, of the stuff, what, what remains mm. and what comes back and what, what gets exported and sold away. It's a, I guess, but at the end of the day, it's like if you're kind of running a business, it's... I guess you're not going. My number one thing is loyalty to the country in which I'm. Yep. You know, it's yeah. like no, it's, I don't it's blame the, dollar, the it's, it's the dollar, you know, yeah. but but um, it's an interesting one, and just in terms of, I guess, like carbon. You see, <laughs> like we could, yeah, like the, the carbon miles on food, mm-hmm. but we could do what the French are doing, couldn't we? We could just make some sensible non wastage sort of proposals uh, and systems that catch things that would otherwise just be ditched. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It, it would. It would mean change. Mm. Change is not necessarily easy. Yeah. Um, but no, it's it's all it's all doable. Yeah. I love hearing about those stories that are doing good for the community and finding solutions that are right there and someone actually doing it. Mm. Because we have this sense that, you know, there's a shortage of food, there's a shortage of abundance, but it's just it's that's not the truth. It's it's how it's being used. It's how it's managed. It, how it's being managed yeah. when you really look at it. There's there's more than enough. And I'm talking about everything, and there are so. I mean, if we can, there's so much technology out there. There there are solutions for everything, but it's how it's managed, and that's that's what blows my mind. It's like I really, if you really think about it, like where's where's the intention, and what you know is is this helping humanity, or is this all about the dollar or the or the profit margin? So much gets driven by that. Yeah, it's so yeah, and, that's the, and it's that's you know we were talking earlier probably about what success is to you and yes you know and and for the most part i mean that's at the top of the list for a lot of people and a lot of you know and as as success is seen it's monetary yes. you know or significance mm. you know but it's at the mm. cost of connection or 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 other things and you know like it, just think we're in our industry you know what I used to think success was it was like I'm going to be in some big American movie with mm. these movie stars or whatnot yeah but you know it's, yeah. it's, it 
it changes, eh? It is, it is a completely legitimate definition yeah. of success. Absolutely. But, yeah. but only one of many. One. Yeah, yeah, if it's mm, the only one yeah. that drives you, then, I mean, there's not many people that, that catch oh, yeah. the brass ring, you know. Mm. And, 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 and What does know, that mean, the brass ring? Well, it's kind of, <laughs> you know, it's 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 a few it's a small percentage yeah, that, I get it. That, yeah. that 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 retain that, a certain level yeah and that, and that, can yeah. that you see i mean mm. when you think about yeah but see to some people you've got the brass ring if i understand the definition is that you're working a lot right yeah, absolutely absolutely yeah. and and so uh, you know looking back as as it's as my biggest measure now like if i'm not achieving what i think i want to achieve or should be achieving mm. uh, you know i Usually get reminded by my wife that well, look at look back, mm-hmm. look where mm. you've come from, look where if you could tell yourself you were going to be here, you know, mm. ten years ago, that would, you'd be wrapped, you'd mm. be yes, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. But but now, like a for me, success is yeah, certainly being able to pay the bills and 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 afford some nice things, and motorcycles or whatnot, but. Uh, but really, within the work, it's the nuts and bolts of having a, you know, that was a good day on set. That was a good connection. Well, mm. Steve and I had a yeah, great yeah, moment. There was a great yeah, moment yeah. that just felt that we was both singing. You know, there was like a yeah. really great mm. connection. Can be the little things truth. too. It's the little things. Sure. It's yeah. like, and you come away and you go, that was. We had a good conversation about a scene that that then made me understand it on a whole other level that connect to something personal you, know, you see in in, or, in maslow's hierarchy of needs you're at a point where the first few needs are resolved and yeah, you, you, sure. can, you can eat you can um pay your bills yeah. and and now you're getting enough to not worry about where the next job job is that you can actually start to enjoy some of the little things and the yeah. things that give satisfaction or a sense of connection or joy absolutely yeah. i, I want to come yeah. back to that yeah. but just to finish off something the day you remind me of um something because it's really nice to meet someone self-actualized enough, actually. <laughs> I can't believe I said that. that <laughs> Should I edit this bit out, Stephen? Not just self yeah. yeah. Um It's really nice to meet someone who um, has, has been able to put behind the day-to-day requirements. They've had enough success that they can go and help other people. Because I think one of the things that prevents people doing that is it's all very well to give money to charity – but when you're struggling to survive yourself, maybe you you just say, well, why would I? I'm, I'm barely able to, you know, um, feed or clothe myself. And so we have to sort of go, I can't afford to do this thing. Someone's someone's in the street asking for someone, something, someone's saying help save the whales and everything's a good cause. And you go, I'm just trying to make my bills. And Actually, ironically, though, having said that, I heard a charity statistic was that some of the biggest givers of charity are people who are not far off being in need in themselves. So there you go. But mm. and I guess that's because of, of empathy. Mm. But it's true to say that helping out on a bigger scale in terms of the dollar amount that you can give forth can really only be big when you've made it to a point in your life where you've got all of your bases covered. My father used to say there are three stages of man. And he's not excluding women, ladies. But there's three stages of, of man. Um, you get on, you get honours, and you get honest. Mm. It sounds like you're at the honest stage, you know? Yeah, it, yeah. That, that's a that's a good little framework, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dad's a wise man. Yeah, yeah, bless his soul. So, um, mm. Craig, mm. you were uh, doing scene group. <laughs> <laughs> with, yeah, with a bunch of people and doing back. rap, yeah. Um, yeah. But thinking about big American movies, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if if you like, or, or or drop a truth bomb on me on, on where your thinking is. But then, what followed in terms of jobs and work and things that helped define you um, uh, to where you are today? Well, I, I think uh, getting uh, so like two thousand two thousand one. Uh, getting a series uh, the, the strip we we, we got to we, you, get oh, to you were it. on the strip yeah 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 with my yeah my, Mike and Edward. Mike and and Robbie and mm-hmm. and uh, Luann Luann and you know and mm-hmm. weirdly enough just been working with Mike and Robbie and it's mm-hmm. it's kind of bizarre all these years later mm-hmm. uh, Mike still looks you know a shit ton better than we do um, <laughs> uh, in some in some ways even better than he was back then but um, 
it's another story. But but I think just getting to practice it. For those who don't know, The Strip is a show about a bunch of guys at a strip club and the, yeah. their owners, the, 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 the couple of ladies who owned the club, right? Yeah. Is that a fair yeah. assessment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so Luanne Gordon played the, she you know, acquires a strip club when, it, you know, her sort of corporate life, uh, where she leaves her corporate life behind her, has a problem with her husband and then buys a strip club and, uh, yeah. And the rest is probably pretty explanatory. But, um, but just getting to do it every day, yeah, you know, on a, for months and months and months, you know, you got seasons of, well, I think you did twenty four episodes in that first season and eighteen in the second, and so you're just doing a lot of work, you know, and then, um, and then King, uh, and then getting uh, King Kong, that that was, you know, that certainly right. that's certainly as you put something like that on your CV, I'm sure it becomes more attractive. See, I'm I'm not I I. I I often say to people, like I know that there's there's a lot that's on my CV that helps me get the jobs. That, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I think there's got to be that. I mean, I always try my best, but I'm not always going to be a wonderful best actor for the job. Or well, okay, you so know what I mean. There's we'll talk King Kong for a second. Peter Jackson's King Kong mm-hmm. uh, shot the remake, in 1998, yeah. 2004, 2004. Mm-hmm. Jesus, off there. Um, where did that sit in relation to Lord of the Rings? Uh, it was after. After, yeah, yeah. yeah. Help, but not by I, much, eh? Soon not after. Much. Yeah, yeah. So he pulls out King Kong. You're on that for how long? Um, I think principal photography was about eight months, and I might. I, yeah, eight months is on my mind too. Yeah, yeah. yeah and and Will, Hal, yeah. yeah, and Will Wallace is down there too. Mm. And you guys played the role of. Um, no, I'm not going to say because I'll get it wrong. What you tell uh, me? I I played the. Sound recordist on the on the film crew, so um, right, yeah. J- uh, I mean, you know, Jack Black was the the director, and uh, mm. uh, John Sumner was the camera, and I was the sound operator, and uh, um, yeah, Kyle Chandler was the 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 actor, yeah, and and That's so right. the, so there was yeah, like we were meant to be making this. Mm. What was this, Will, this Will's movie. character? Uh, he was a crew. He was a crew member on the on the ship. <laughs> Yeah, I nearly made the mistake mm. of saying you were another crew member because I remember he was, but he told me about his his one more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. that that's that's a really cool role. Um, How did you feel about that when when you watched it? Uh, well, it's it's so weird because for for the most part, you know, you kind of really just there serving, uh, you know, being part of a massive production, but a, but a very small cog in a massive production, and and not a whole lot to do. But how does eight months work feel? Oh, that's phenomenal phenomenal i mean you know you're not there every day but they yeah. keep you there mm, and and yeah. you know you get treated very nicely you know there was had a a nice house that they put me in with a mm-hmm. rental car and the very shot in wellington very, shot in wellington yeah at, at stone street and um and they're very generous you know incredibly generous and mm. you sort of get you know uh, somewhat spoiled <laughs> you know sure. when the conditions mm-hmm. are pretty pretty amazing but also just opens your eyes to you go okay the process itself for you as an actor is the same you know it's mm-hmm. like there's all the stuff all the bells and whistles around you and there's maybe a feeling of a bit more pressure but you know essentially it's the same and um but yeah i think that that helped in that regard so you know do you think that helped did that help you get more work because that was on your resume Quite possibly, yeah, I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't say for definite mm. one way or the other. But I, I'm sure. I mean, yeah, it, it, it would have to. You know, yeah, you would think so. That yeah, well, well it lends credibility, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's yeah. like you could have done a shit ton of little things, but just one thing that everyone knows, and they go, okay, yeah, yeah. <sighs> we're yeah. safe with him. Yeah, and the, 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 it, it's you know? assurance. I think I offer. It's like offer it's bankable assurance. Yeah, it's bankable. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and you know, and I had the, you know, the the blessings of being able to do. A lot of shows where, you know, when you think about, I think the strip was maybe, I think it did 38 episodes. I think, I think Outrageous Fortune, it did, um, uh, we did three seasons, three seasons of, how many were they doing? 18, something like that. Um, so, you know, you do, and then a bunch of different series where you're just doing, you know, hundreds of episodes of television, mm. you know, mm. um, you're just getting to There's do There's a lot of outrageous fortune, isn't it? There's a lot, you know, yeah. and and, uh, and 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 all the other, you know, shows. You just go. There's another episode of television. You just mm. you're just plying your trade. You're just mm. getting to do it a lot. 
and in different genres. And were you still doing people. scene group at the yeah. same level during that time? Yeah, yeah. When we when we could, yeah. If we were in the if we were around, if people were around, would there's always, there was always a some version of it yeah. happening. Yeah. So you'd have a kind of a a group that would change its character as people were were and weren't available. Yeah. On set. Yeah. And then they'd go do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then and then I remember getting cast in Xena. It was an episode that Renee O'Connor was directing, and she was in our scene group. And she wow. got, we got mm. to work in a way that was the, the vocabulary that we were using in scene group. Very familiar. You know, and mm, she yeah. was like, okay, best thing about that was um, what I'm ready for is – Yada yada right. yada, and and all of a sudden it was just this click in. I was like, oh my god, this is so good to work in this way with someone who's, mm. you know, you're you're in that in that sort of same mind mindset with, but um, but yeah, I, I think on that path to always working is that work gets work, you know, yeah. and it begets another absolutely. Yeah. And when you and when you're working and an audition comes in. You're warm, as we talked mm. about earlier. You're warm. You just go boom, 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 and yeah. you're probably not putting too much on it. You're not yeah. desperate for it, yeah. which I think is a big one, and that relaxation. Desperation's that, huge. Desperation. They can really get in the way of things. Absolutely. Wanting it too much. Because because it's a psychological thing that is going to be read by the camera, and if it's not yeah. working, I mean, if you're pl- auditioning for someone who's desperate, <laughs> <laughs> and you're desperate, great. Great. But yeah. if you're not, it's probably going to get in the way. You know, mm. yeah, um, yeah, I agree. I've I've had that in my own experience. You know, being in the casting room, and I've had that feedback from actually the people in the room as well. That the more relaxed you are, yeah. the more natural you are. Yeah, yeah. Well, you you're mean not forcing you mean anything? Your feedback was, "Gosh, you're so relaxed." Yeah, and I. And, and <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because you say to me, oh, "I've got an audition for this thing tomorrow. I shouldn't get this." But you go, uh, but I'm going to uh, just relax and go I've and do it, and then re- he gets it. I've right. done a reverse psychology on it as well. <laughs> you, you, but you say things but, like, this was really not for me. And yeah. so you must go in incredibly relaxed. But I'm, but I'm also at, at the time where I believe what's meant for me won't pass me by. And I understand that's, Yeah, that's big. That's, that, my that's my mum's saying. Yeah, yeah. What's yeah, for you uh, won't go, won't go by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can yeah. you do that in a Scottish accent? <laughs> uh, she'd say, she'd say uh, what's, what's for you? Won't go by you. Is that right? Something yeah. like that. What's, no, what's, your, what, what's the saying? What's for you won't go past you. I, God, I haven't done the Scots accent for a wee while, so. Nice. Uh, what's, what's, what's for you won't go past you. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I remember I, coming to you for advice on Scot- Scottish accent. Yeah, I oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I wasn't very what good was at that? it. What was that for? I can't remember. Just one of those things we I remember, did. I remember that. Yeah. 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 That's right. Voice over? Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, there's something to that. And mm. I think that comes with experience. It comes with yeah. uh, not taking things personally. There's a whole bunch of things that you figure out for yourself. Mm. And, and, and um, yeah, so you, you, you bring more to it. And, and because, you know, someone like you that's just had so much experience, you bring you, that, if that's a container, you bring that container, you, into every yeah. environment, into every situation. And people pick up on that. They yeah. can rely on you, you know. They, yeah. That's, this guy's got just a wealth of yeah. I'm life the reliable experience. Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> reliable. But that that's huge because they can they can depend on you, they can rely on you. And it's not just in the acting field, it's in any yeah. any any field that you present yourself. So. Hire that guy, he's reliable and he's definitely right. not desperate. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, I sort of wanted to hear I didn't want to put words in your mouth, but I did sort of want to hear you say, well, you know, work gets begets work. Yeah. It, At which it, yeah. I almost went, that's all we've got time for. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, all right. Yeah. yeah. But uh, no, I sort of wanted to, I, you know, I kind of want to know if that's um, that's the thing. Well, and, and, and well, one of many, but I think, I think it's one of the, one of the big ones, like, and it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to mean, because sometimes people can interpret that as, oh, well, great. Well, I haven't got any work, so I'm not mm. going to get any work. And I was like, it doesn't have to be work mm. that someone's employing you for. Yeah. You know, scene group, that was work. Mm. That was, we were doing the work, you know? Yeah. And so when audition came, there was a lot of periods where we were unemployed when we were doing that. Mm. But when audition came along, and sometimes if you, you went, I've got this audition, I can't learn the scene, I'll take this in and we'll work it in the scene group. Mm. You know, and then the next day you go and do the audition and you've really given it a good rinse, you know. Mm. You've done the work. The work work gets work and, and, and like you've well, you've got your, you know, theatre company with with, with Blair and mm. you know, I think that's 
wonderful. I think that's what we should be doing, mm. you know. It's, I was almost, well, should I bring that up? But you brought it up. Um, <laughs> because what was going through my mind when you were saying that, it's like, again, it's like you're reading my mind there because um, it happened with Jeremy earlier. He was just saying the stuff I was thinking yeah. and you just did it. Um, I, for people listening, you would have heard this just last episode. Sorry. But um, f- for your benefit, I made a sort of a decision in my life that um, if I could do acting, and continue to do it for the rest of my life, but never get paid. But the acting I did, I still thoroughly enjoyed. Mm. Would I still act? Yeah. And uh, the conclusion I came to was, yeah, yeah. Uh, because I love it. Yeah. And um, and honestly, some of the paid work I've done, not really enjoy. It's just yeah. thanks, cool, got yeah, some yeah. money from there. But the things I've done with with Blair. Yeah. And, and Sapphire and, um, uh, Sapphire is the name of the production company that, that we, we use for lots of things, but it's mostly. Is that to do theater. with Sapphire and Steel? As Steel being his son? Yeah. Pro- there's a, <laughs> I think it's, <laughs> Blair's pretty straightforward. He's like, this is a cool name. Yeah. Sapphire. <laughs> Sapphire. Yeah. Was, so, was that an 80s it was a show? TV show. TV yeah. show. Yeah. 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 British, uh, yeah. yeah. It was pretty fruity. Was <laughs> it? was pretty out there. <laughs> Sapphire and Steel. Do you remember that? I can remember the title. I, I, can remember, I remember the title. I can't remember Steve it either. Very, yeah. yeah. But uh, some of the best work I did was on stage with him and the and the guys that joined us in the theatre company. It's the best work I've done. Yeah. Things where the, we did um we did Morning Star in two different seasons, and the second season um filled filled out the Hamilton uh, Summer Garden Arts Festival, but it's a very very small outside stage. It took all of 90 people or something. That's oh, all. Wow. Yeah, but it yeah. filled it in this beautiful outside tiered stone amphitheater. Beautiful. So let's just say three nights at 90 people a night is like no one saw it. Really? Right. Right? Because we performed in bigger spaces and theaters. Right. And um, still, that's that's a bunch of people, but it's like no one saw it. And some of the best work of my life happened in a place that no one saw. No one saw just yeah. like in yeah. your scene hey, group. even less people saw <laughs> yeah. my best work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, the, just yeah. the other six, five people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, 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 but you do it because you love it. And uh, I've had this conversation with Blair. Like we, you know, Blair and I go back a long ways. Um, yeah. You know, around the same time that met Carl and and Karen and when I before I was acting. Yeah. And. Uh, uh, and I've always held him in, in in high regard as a as an actor and as a and just mm. as a as a as a person like he's uh, as a, as a human as a human and and we got to reconnect on head high you know yeah um, last season and then this season we finally got around to having the drink that we said we were going to have last season yeah and uh, it was it was going to be a couple of beers which ended up being a lot a lot more than that but yeah but we just had a lot to talk about and one of the topics was where he's at now. In terms of doing the acting, and it's like he's, I began he, to hear what he said. Well, he said he's in, in the, the best place he's been in his life, where the acting's not for anything other than the joy of the acting. Yeah, you know, it's well, not. And he gets um, enough work and stuff to also just really enjoy it. Yeah, but he's also but he's you a know, lawyer. He's a lawyer. Like, <laughs> <it's> like, you <laughs> know, yeah, it's yeah. Like, you know, and yeah. he's and he's living living up the coast and 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 just. He's just finished. He just rapped at the same time as you rapped. Mm. We rapped mm. on on head high. He rapped on Power Rangers. Yes, and yeah. um, I heard that it has gone f- bananas in ratings in the US. Oh, awesome! And we know awesome. nothing about it, right? I we know, don't right. sense yeah. it, feel it. We don't even have it on TV, and there's it's a, a there's production. A, that's, there's a channel. Yeah. There's a dedicated channel that just plays. Is there? That yeah, yeah. When you're no in the states, I don't know if it still exists, but I remember. I should know better yeah. because I I did voiceover for Power Rangers, and they recently had me on a podcast for it as a, like a fan <laughs> podcast. Ah, and I was like, yeah, okay, I'll talk to you about. And then they'd ask me questions about what's your favourite monster, and I go, oh, I don't actually know, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like know, asking me a question about sports. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. Well, Sassy's in this season as well, and she showed me. So I was like, Fuck, "Oh, is she is she in the Power Rangers season?" Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, well, you and, know, and well, uh, she showed me some stuff and like what's been released, and you go, you realize just how how big it is. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's just this because I think it's been been made here for what twenty five years or something. Has it been that long? Yeah, and it was, and it's been made elsewhere, you know, other points. So it's you know. Mm. It's like, I dare say it's 30 odd years old. So there's just, you know, well, think of the people who were like nine or 10 watching it who are now, you know, 
Well, Jeremy, who just left, um, he and I, I'm not quite sure exactly when and where we met, but our early part of our friendship goes back to when we were both doing Power Rangers Loop Group. Ah, right from the yeah. earliest time we ever met, yeah. it was either that or some other shows and things that like we with Jim and yeah, yeah. With Jim McLeod and that yeah. Well, he's and he's he's still doing. I mean, it's yeah, kind of, he's like the you know yeah, he's the pro, right? That's right, that's right. And uh, Campbell Cooley, um, Campbell and those guys were all. That's oh, where God, I that's started doing it. Yeah, yeah. interesting. Eh? So, where to? Um, from here, you know, with, with what's coming up in, in your life? Because I know you're taking a break, a much deserved break. Too. Well, the funny thing is, this is, it's, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's the, the, the taking a break really is, I mean, if, if I'd had a job that, that butted up against head high, I'd be doing that right now. But yeah, sorry, uh, I shouldn't so, have mischaracterized so, no, no, the way I say no, no, it. No, 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 but Apologies. it's, uh, yeah. no, please don't apologize. It's not, and this is, this, there's a lot of controversy in my head about <laughs> unemployment, uh, rest time, holidays, Ooh. you know, because for cause actors, do we it, ever really have, yeah. do we, we just, yeah, you, you're between jobs, but it, yeah. I definitely didn't know that because it was, it was a lot of hard work. Um, and I say that in the best possible way, it was a lot of hard work, you know, head high season two. Mm. I definitely knew I wanted to have some, some time out where I could chill out, ride my bike. Playing yeah. my guitar and 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 see some mates and mm. and not come get, to a podcast. Come to a podcast, you know, down the road, down the road. Yeah, um, with with my mate Dave and sure, uh, fifty three minutes down the road. But yeah, fifty <laughs> minutes. You know, uh, it's a good little good little ride. Yeah. Um, so yeah, now it's just I, I can feel I, you know. Do I put down an audition down the other day for something in Oz, and that was fun to do in the regard of doing some acting. Mm-hmm. Um, which is nice. So it's like, okay, I still want to do the acting. That's good. Um, <laughs> That's good. Check. Yeah. It's good. Check. Uh, and and we're just in the in the midst of working out when we head to Sydney because. That's, ah, that's, where that's yeah. a chunk of your life. I was going to ask mm. you about actually. Yes, I mean that's that was where we were living pre-COVID for the last you know ten years, um, and and coming back and forth for work and whatnot. But you chose this side of the Tasman to, for the event, for the pandemic. Well, yeah. I mean, I'd been here for season one of Head High and mm-hmm. decided to stick around for Christmas. And then Sass had gone back. She was finishing a job off in Brisbane and she went over there and I stayed, um, you know, hang out with my, my folks. And, uh, okay, because and our, we all sort of locked down around March, right? Yeah. Of 20. Yeah. So your, your so 2019 found- Christmas, three months later we were in lockdown. What did you do in those three months? So we sold and bought another place. We okay. sold the place that was just around the corner from Dave. Right. Um, we, we had done a little cycle into Pawanui itself and uh, seen a place and had an, made an inquiry and it was it was in our, you know, at that point in our price range. <laughs> sure. One <laughs> month uh, later it wasn't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and basically did the – and never do this, by the way, never settle – on selling a place and buying a place on the same day. And Dave said this story, but uh, it was, yeah. Hang on, I'm sorry. Stressful. This blow my mind. Never settle on a place and what? So, so we settled on uh, the sale of our place. Yeah. And the purchase of our new place. On the same day. On the same day. Because you need a gap for the banks to get their shit together for transference of money? Uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's that and there's all sorts of different things which uh, lawyers to, but yeah just you yeah. know and people needing information and asking for it in the last at the last minute and yeah whatnot. yeah yeah but banks as well and we're also organizing through australia and oh fund, yeah of course funds and then using proceeds from the sale as part of and how much so you still got your 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 spot overseas yes yeah, so we have we have sydney? an apartment in sydney yeah yeah um and so so that was so i was here sort of sorting that out yeah. and wanting to spend a little bit of time in our new place before we, you know, shot off anywhere. Yeah. And then ended up spending the entirety of lockdown in it and still still there now. And so that really kind of feels like home, but it's also made us go, oh, holy shit. Well, Sydney had been, I mean, New Zealand's always home, but Sydney mm. had been our home base for, for 10 years. And now, now what do we do? You know, so. Mm. Did, did, was there a, a sense of freaking out or uncertainty or were you okay uh at the moment oh no at, at that, that time at, at choosing that time. new zealand at, at that time. yeah yeah, well, uh, yeah because it, it upset your your plans obviously yeah it, it did but you know what to be honest 
like Sass and I talk, we had, we had some we had a lot of fun in lockdown because <laughs> we because we were like there's no fear of missing out. No one else was getting any acting. Yeah, jobs. no one else is missing. <laughs> uh, no, yeah. See, that speaks to a really interesting sure. actor's psychology, and that is we, FOMO. Yeah, that's a real like I've got to be where I've got to be. L.A. was the like the. Was it you that said the end of the road? Yeah, like the end of yeah, the road, yeah, which is because yeah. Karen's, yeah. Because Jeremy was also talking about his time in LA as well. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. like, as you say, like, I, I keep thinking about that. Um, well, there's nowhere else to be. You can't go from LA to anywhere better yeah, in yeah. terms of an industry that will support you and could fulfill your requirements for yeah. week to week work or whatever. And I think for a lot of New Zealanders who live there, live here, um, it's either it's either Sydney, London, or LA as mm-hmm. your choices. And for those that don't leave, they have to ex- expect or, or accept, I should say, that if you want to live here, you're not in a position to to fulfil perhaps that dream of yeah. um, you know your your hopes and aspirations as a young man who just wanted to be rich and famous as an actor, for example. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. because you're in New Zealand, so you've yeah. you've given up one thing mm-hmm. for another, and yeah, the thing absolutely. you gave up yeah. is a little bit of acting dream for a lifestyle you like here. Yeah, and if that works and it sustains you, and you get enough, and you're happy, hey, that's cool too. Absolutely, you know what? And yeah. and and more and more, that's that plays a part. Like I'm like. It's got to be the lifestyle. Lifestyle's got to, you know, it's yeah. got to be high up there in the, in priorities. Um, well, we were just saying yeah. to Jeremy, or I just said to Jeremy in the in the last episode that um, um, me choosing to stay here in this country um, was a choice I had to make ultimately, and in part because a part of me wasn't I, I wasn't just going to be an actor for the rest yeah. of my life. I also wanted to um, earn enough money to attract the appropriate mate and own some property and and have a kid one day. And yeah, you know yeah, yeah. that last one is still to come. And um, and you know we're working on it, but um, just so you rest assured, yeah. we're working on. Practice, but, practice, uh, practice, practice makes perfect. Yeah, yeah. we're practicing lots. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, of course we are. But um, you can't necessarily do all of that um, when when you want to be an actor because yeah. you've got to be in places and yeah. you've got to do things that you've got to make some hard decisions. And you've got to be in places yeah. that are different to your partner. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and we've done that ad nauseum. You know, for a twenty year relationship, that's hard, man. Mm. It's it's tough, and, yeah. and that's why like Sydney was. So good in in, in in one regard, we we both got on a show that we did for six years. A place years. to call home. A place to go home. We did mm. six seasons of. And Lovely show. Yeah, it's a beautiful mm. show. And, and uh, you know. You looked we, amazing in it too. You both did. You looked just stunningly. Like it was 40s, wasn't it? 50s. 50s. 50s sorry. Which is hence Dave's comment about um, my demographic. My, you know, oh, I see. demographic yeah. of, of, of women who. Uh, the Blue Rinse demographic. Whenever, yeah. whenever we go out on, like on, a, on a bike ride right. and we go yeah. into a, a pub or a restaurant or something I'm just waiting for the first time that anybody under 25 yeah actually goes and talks to him <laughs> Well, because but I don't think those people know about television one so <laughs> yeah yeah I mean, you, so, uh, Robbie, yeah. people come up and talk to Robbie that are under 25, don't they? Yeah. But you don't seem to be able to hit that no, spot, mate. No, so. Well, maybe head, head I might be the, you know, I, I get a little, it was, there was a little bit of a, a push off the back of season one. Uh, so I think, you know, 10, 11 year old um, or, you know, uh, boys who play rugby yeah, uh, are possibly a. You know, de- new demographic that could be eleven-year-olds and and seven-year-olds. It's, it's yeah. a demographic. Yeah, yeah. Big gap I, I between, spam, like, Yeah, there's no. nothing in between. But you know, sure. there's a, <laughs> those, those are just tent poles. You know, I'm yet to sort of make the. Yeah, yeah uh, I, I hear you. Yeah. That's um. Hey, you've you've yeah. just got to work on it. That's I'll, all. I'll work on yeah, it. Yeah, it's a work in progress. Trust always. me. Listen to this episode. I think you get a lot of good advice from yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's cool, Dave. Before we um, wrap up, any any thoughts on um, elements that have made life a success and keeps things working for you? Any elements? Um, love. It's important. Absolutely. I think the, um, the need to to love and be loved, I think, is really at the at the core of a lot of things. And that, that was, that's a that's a late lesson, I think, to a degree. I mean, my wife is absolutely fabulous. And she's taught me. Well, wow. um, and I think that just that overwhelming need to be cherished and appreciated, and um, I think that's just the core of, of just about everything. Really, that's mm. terribly philosophical, isn't it? Really? Oh, I love it. But, love no, it. Yeah. Love I agree. It. I agree a hundred percent. I think that's yeah. the core 
in every human on this planet. It's the, it's a core fundamental need. Mm. It is a basic need, and and sometimes it it becomes to the detriment of other things. We serve other things in our life, but underpinning that is just something we really really it's crave and need, and it, yeah. it's part of who we who we truly are. Yeah. Mm. What did Sorry, you say you, no. It's, yeah. It just remind me of what Stephen said about the um uh the name of the person with the, the, the needs the um oh Maslow's hierarchy of Maslow's needs. Hierarchy oh, right. of needs. Yeah. Now, I don't know that what that particular one, but I remember one that uh, this maybe some acting teacher gave me, and it was the basic needs that mm. counter each counted each other, and you know one was uh was basically sustain you know survival sust- you know sustaining mm, yeah. but then or, or wasn't or, or uh, Raymond know. Hawthorne was I don't it? know I can't remember I can't remember because he gave me certainty. a list once of uh, the things that are the most important priorities and, yeah, you know right. to, oh, to understand been, as an actor I, well it might have been someone it else too been, it might have been from it could have been through Sasses because she did a lot of obviously a lot of work with, well as soon as I looked at it I thought oh, this is just like Maslow's hierarchy of needs from <laughs> yeah, like, from my 1990s <laughs> advertising diploma okay great thanks yeah yeah so you got certainty on one and one God, we need certainty. You know, we it's we need to know certain things. Uh, you know, that we're going to be safe and and have food mm, and whatnot. Yeah. But we also need spontaneity. Yeah. You know, and the next two down is connection and significance. And if we yeah. pursue mm. significance too much, we lose connection. Yes. And those have to be in balance. And getting uh, on, getting on is connect. You know, absolutely. And so getting on And then the next one down was actually. Two that didn't run in counter with each other, but um, personal growth and contribution, mm. which is you know where I think you know once you once you have those other mm. four in place and are balanced, you move into actually being able to grow mm. and contribute. Mm. You know, mm. contribute to your your community, which you know sort of thing about in terms of you, Dave. Like you know, you yeah you you find a place where. I mean, it's 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 interesting as an actor. You're always looking at them as tools to use when you're trying to create a role <laughs> or mm. whatnot. But I think that's a good thing because it's mm. human tools, right? It's it's yep. it's sort of human tools. But I know that when you know you, when you pursue too much, you know, significance and significance being, uh, you know, I I'm, I want to be a famous actor. I want to mm-hmm. you know have all that money. I want to be known and blah blah blah. <laughs> You lose that yeah. you know, connection or love, you know. It's a, you remind cool. me what um, John Lennon said, that exact thing. He said, what good is all this fame, this fortune, if I don't connect it to something? Yeah. Community, Yeah, you know, love. Well, until you've had a shitload of one thing, yeah. you don't know how useless it is. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 you, you got to walk well, that path and know absolutely. for yourself. But he, he said that this, that exact same thing. He yeah. was very onto it, very wise in that. In that yeah. sense, yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. The need, the human need to be loved, to love and to be loved, um, is so important. I think from a young age, that if we don't get it, we pursue yes. all kinds of other things, other ways. to mm. to fill that hole, yeah. mm. and we experience yeah. and pursue all sorts of distortions to, mm. to pursue that. And yeah. I think yeah. distraction as well. I think people, yes. You know, tend to to fill their life with distraction and and actually think that that's real life when actually it's probably not. If if more people answered that um, that formula of finding love in their life, even if it's just for themselves, mm. um, and in relationships, of course, too, and had a sense of peace with that, people would be a lot more chilled uh, and and wouldn't mm. behave in some of the strangest ways we see. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. I agree. Mm. Less need to prove yourself, and yeah. for example, absolutely. On that note, on that philosophical note, very nice <laughs> note to end on. I hope um, the two of you come and ride past again sometime. Yeah, yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. Thanks, yeah. guys. Yeah. Thanks, fellas. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining yeah. us. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs>